really happy for having you here and can't wait to see what you have to tell. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm uh, Anna Podvorna, and today I'll try to tell you a thing of two about uh, building a, a sustainable uh, art career uh, in the entertainment industry. Uh, so I've been working uh, in video games and film for about 10 years. Uh, those are the companies uh, I had the pleasure to work for uh, during uh, uh, that period of time. Uh, my adventure started with uh, CD Projekt Red. I uh, worked on uh, a Gwen the Witcher card game, uh, as well as uh, uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Um, I've been uh, freelancing for Wizards of the Coast for about five years. Uh, I am illustrating uh, cards for Magic the Gathering as well as book covers for Dungeons and Dragons uh, and uh, creating marketing art for uh, both. Um, uh, I also work for Riot Games. Uh, uh, I was illustrator for uh, League of Legends Wild Rift. Uh, I was also a lead concept artist for uh, uh, Evil West by Flying Wild Hog. Uh, I work also on two movies, uh, a sequel, a sequel to The Joker, uh, as well as a prequel uh, to uh, the 2019 Lion King. Uh, they may be, release, be releasing next year, but really who knows <laughs> with the strikes right now. Uh, okay, so uh, how can you approach uh, uh, even starting to think about uh, finding your place uh, uh, in art, uh, in uh, games and, and movies? So usually it's good to uh, actually um, think what uh, career options are um, even available and and kind of try to narrow it down uh, to actually what you uh, are uh, good at and like to do. So let's say um, you like to work in 2D, maybe you're strongest with characters, so uh, you prefer um, doing designs over illustrations, so let's go with concept art. Uh, games are a uh, much bigger industry than uh, film. They, they are uh, actually... Um, movies and uh, music industry are still s uh, combined, are still smaller, smaller than games, so there is just more work available in games. Um, let's say you want to shoot for maybe not uh, AAA uh, from the start, so uh, you like, uh, uh, like something in the middle, uh, and let's say you end up uh, 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 trying to apply for, let's say, Obsidian. But this is kind of like a um, idealized uh, version of uh, how uh, most artists' careers go. The reality is that you, your career most likely ends up being more like this. So uh, you start uh, in one branch, uh, they hire you for one thing, but uh, uh, you end up helping out uh, in uh, a lot of departments. and. Uh, after a few years, you're basically touched uh, like half of possible art jobs uh, in games and uh, a bunch in film. And uh, if you're an artist, usually, even though you don't want to do UI, you end up doing UI. Everybody does UI for some reason. Uh, okay, so uh, how to actually break uh, into the industry? So uh, this is a screenshot from my uh, oldest uh, existing gallery on the internet, from my DeviantArt. So uh, a lot of works, but uh, when you gray out stuff that I did before I actually got my first uh, job in games, suddenly that's not a lot. That's not even a third uh, of my uh, work uh, consists of my like proper um, uh, uh, studio work. Uh, in other words, it can take a while, and usually um, you really need to like build up the momentum to actually um, get that first job. So it takes a long time, or uh, at least for most, usually it does, uh, because you really need to get that first uh, lucky strike. <laughs> but there is a bright side. So out of all the companies that I worked for or uh, freelanced for, uh, I actually applied only for the first job. So uh, uh, I got my work at uh, CDPR uh, by uh, doing it uh, kind of the traditional way. So uh, preparing a CV, preparing a portfolio, uh, uh, applying, going through the uh, interview process. Um, all the other uh, jobs uh, uh, from all the other studios, uh, I got contacted 
buy them. I, I don't have to apply. So, and it is often the case uh, for artists who work uh, five years plus, uh, you really have to uh, struggle for the few first years, but uh, later uh, when you uh, make some connection, get established, people start trusting you, uh, the studios reach out to you, and it's uh, a great relief, let's say, <laughs> when you don't have to uh, kind of struggle for uh, the next gig. So, uh, but uh, since the first one is actually the, the hardest job you'll uh, probably ever have to get, so uh, how to go about it? So. One thing, uh, there's a few things that I would recommend, and I'm also uh, saying it from the position of a person that was hiring artists for, for the teams. So I kind of saw it from the other side, uh, uh, what kind of mistakes uh, uh, young artists make uh, in um, trying to uh, apply for studio positions. So the, thing, the first thing I would recommend is using established portfolio websites. And it doesn't ma matter if it will be Arstation, um, Cara, Behance, uh, really what, whatever uh, your pick might be from the big ones. I would not recommend making your own uh, website. Those can be really confusing. Uh, more often than not, uh, they are made by not professionals, <laughs> so they are very buggy. They can be hard to navigate. And it's really heartbreaking when you can see that the first picture in the gallery uh, is um, like attractive one, but you really cannot get to the next one because uh, uh, ju just the website is broken. And if you have, uh, let's say, 50 portfolios to review in a day, uh, sometimes you are physically not capable to get back and email the artist to, to say like, hey, may maybe fi fix the website because we cannot see your work. <laughs> uh, it's good to also cater your portfolio to the um, studio that you want to work for. So uh, if you're uh, trying to get a work uh, in like a light-hearted uh, studio uh, that make is making like um, uh, bright and friendly mobile games, maybe push all those gory monsters to the very <laughs> bottom of your portfolio because th th they're just not relevant. And uh, sometimes the art director or artist who will be looking at it will think that uh, this illustrates your range, but sometimes the first person that will be looking at your portfolio uh, is like a HR person totally not connected with uh, uh, the art world, so they will just not get it. <laughs> um, keeping your CV simple, uh, there is no need to like uh, write a three full page uh, biography about your life. It should be like really simple bullet points and only the relevant stuff. Uh, the thing that uh, a lot of people are not aware of is that in the companies that are bigger than around 150, 200 employees, all um, portfolios and CVs go through uh, automatic AI screening. So uh, you might have a great portfolio that will never land on a, a before the eyes of a real person because you put some uh, disqualifying um, keywords. Uh, in your CV that the AI system will just filter out. So it is really important to, um, it literally takes like 15 minutes to research uh, which uh, keywords are attractive for those AI systems and which are disqualifying. So uh, kind of be mindful of that. Uh, being easy to contact. Uh, it really happens a lot that people don't put their phone number or uh, uh, they put like some spam email uh, that we c just, just cannot reach them. And then what? Uh, if they have like unique uh, name, we, we can find them on um, like LinkedIn or somewhere. But if um, the name is generic and there is like 20 people, like tough luck, uh, that 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 portfolio is gone. Uh, prepping for the interview, like um, there is, there are a ton of uh, companies. You don't have to be uh, super knowledgeable about them all, but. If you get the interview, just read the Wikipedia article, just minimum. <laughs> and uh, the last point, we are artists, everybody's weird. We get that, but just contain it for the, an hour. <laughs> like seriously, later when you are with, uh, because people on the art team will get it. They, they are all like quirky. But you, on the interview, you'll meet like a manager or HR person that can be very uptight. And the, the stories, guys, <laughs> the stuff that people do on the interviews that you would think that is obvious, but apparently it's not. Like, wear a shirt. 
the, like the, don't have uh, like your mother working behind you or like sometimes like really weird stuff like once we had uh, a guy that uh, uh, as an interest he just put Batman so like okay cool interesting we ask about why Batman like you like the comics you like the character and the guy said that uh, he really um, um, empathizes with Batman because he also has a lot of hidden rage within <laughs> so it's like <laughs> Cool, cool, but <laughs> even if you think it, like, please don't say it. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, how to actually uh, uh, stay afloat uh, if you want to, uh, Kenna, uh, you get the job and you want to uh, make it your career for like decades to come. So uh, I personally am not really a big fan of uh, very strong personal styles because uh, um, by the end of the day, we are commercial artists, so uh, we kind of have to bend to whatever the style of the project or studio is. So, uh, if I'm asked to do something uh, in the Witcher universe that is like sad and gory, okay, we'll do the sad and gory and realistic and uh, uh, um, like super grainy, uh, but uh, obviously, uh, um, if uh, um, the client is Riot and they want to do like a, a crystal rose uh, uh, wedding themed uh, piece, sometimes you have to kind of flick uh, the switch in your brain within a day. And uh, okay, cool. Now, now, now we are doing like a, a cute f and fluffy stuff. Uh, and sometimes it's uh, more even. Um, you kind of uh, have to uh, be able to feel the vibe of uh, the IP. So again. Uh, for the Witcher stuff, um, uh, it's a realistic fantasy, but uh, it, it has this like sad, uh, kind of melancholic, depressing uh, undertone that uh, it's uh, good to convey. And in a way, very similar. So Magic the Gathering, also realistic fantasy, but um, the vibe is different. So I you cannot do uh, obvious stuff like gore or like outright killing people uh, in the pictures. But even the, when the stuff is supposed to be scary, it's kind of like the American scary. So like um, uh, spooky Halloween and not uh, like uh, Slavic East European depression, the death is upon us. And uh, they really react differently to the stuff. And uh, you kind of have to um, like really fill out uh, w what the vibe of the project is. And um, for Riot, for example, uh, uh, at least for Wild Rift, the biggest audience uh, uh, ended up being in China, and a lot of the assets that I was creating for them had to uh, be uh, acceptable for Apple Store. So uh, th there's like a lot of requirements. So even though the whole game is about uh, characters battling each other uh, on uh, art, you cannot actually show uh, people fighting. Um, uh, so th they have to be like preparing to fight or swing their sword or stuff. They absolutely cannot, m even the sword cannot be making contact. And um, another thing, uh, because it has to live in the app store, so you cannot even compose the stuff in a way that the character is pointing at the camera with the sword or gun, because that's considered threatening. So <laughs> there's like a lot of stuff you have to dance around to, to deliver those pieces. Okay, so uh, no matter what you work, uh, on uh, the fundamentals are uh, universal; they stay the same. So, no matter um, if you're doing like realistic stuff uh, or cute and uh, cartoony stuff, cute stuff is cute. So, uh, baby proportions, big eyes, round shapes. Uh, like, uh, if you get those bullet points in your mind, you can uh, bend your style to whatever is needed. Same goes for monsters. So the uh, kind of predator uh, uh, language, so claws, uh, glowing eyes, uh, heart shapes. Um, you can still stylize it and push uh, in any direction. Um, it still has to communicate, okay, that, that it's an enemy, it's a monster, uh, we'll eat you. So, um. And uh, again, for villainous characters, you can borrow a lot uh, from uh, the monster, so uh, chloe fingers, glowing eyes. Uh, dr more dramatic lighting, uh, dramatic poses, um, uh, uh, it's, uh, all the uh, 
if you know what, what are the cues uh, for um, mm, conveying villainy, <laughs> uh, you can do it in for any even universe, any style. Same goes for hero characters. So uh, usually probably more uh, um, heroic poses, uh, more uh, soft and daylight lightning, uh, more inviting poses, um, like um, uh, not adding those um, predatory animal elements to them. Usually, um, uh, it's kind of important to go over the top with the stuff uh, because uh, usually people will uh, spare like very brief glance and they will uh, kind of get um, immediately get it. Nobody will uh, think a lot about those pieces, so they uh, sometimes it's good to rely on tropes. Uh, another thing that I actually really like to do uh, 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 is. Uh, uh, act out the emotions in my pieces with uh, uh, hand ge gestures because they are so visible and so easy to show in a silhouette. Sometimes faces can be really small, uh, especially when people are viewing the stuff on mobile or uh, as magic cards. So if you go uh, really over the top with uh, hand uh, 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 gesticulations, uh, it can be really helpful for this uh, kind of illustration. Uh, proportions and stylization. So that's uh, kind of another layer that uh, it is good to be mindful of. So sometimes cli clients want to go as realistic as possible. So uh, um, uh, 3D photo textures, uh, like basically anything you can throw at it uh, to uh, add this um, photorealistic grain to it. Uh, sometimes uh, you kind of have to go uh, uh, a step lower. So this was for Dota 2. They wanted to uh, keep it realistic, but kind of uh, uh, cleaned from uh, the detail uh, a bit um, removed. Uh, uh, those are explorations that we did for uh, um, uh, Evil West. So at some point we wanted to go for this early 20th century um, uh, newspaper caricature style. Uh, so. Um, Again, uh, 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 as long as the anatomy uh, is correct, uh, you can kind of keep, keep pushing uh, the, the stylization in many different directions. Kinda, uh, a step further, so a League of Legends that uh, for human characters can uh, still be pretty realistic, but uh, uh, a lot of characters in, um, uh, um, that are uh, the part of the IP are very, uh, very cartoony, uh, almost like chibis. And uh, even within one IP, you kind of have to uh, know what the character is, wha what the players expect, and uh, uh, how um, serious or how cutesy you should go with uh, those particular characters. And rendering, uh, again, uh, sometimes uh, 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 you have to go uh, as far uh, into realism as possible, uh, because this is the art direction. Uh, the, uh, sometimes uh, they... I, I don't know even why we are making those uh, things painted, uh, since, for example, the the the, the troll giant guy uh, uh, ended up looking like a 3D render. So why not just render it? But sure. Um, but and uh, but sometimes uh, it's also uh, good to be mindful what's the purpose of the artist. So um, here uh, is a piece I did for. Uh, Magic the Gathering, but it's a uh, packaging card. So usually the packaging card is printed in a lower resolution, so there is no point of... Uh, um, so the forms and light is realistic, but there is really no point of going too far with the textures because it won't be visible and can be actually uh, incorrectly interpreted uh, in the print. Uh, which I think uh, that mistake I made here, uh, it was the first batch of... Um, uh, uh, Carter Arts I did for the uh, foil packaging for Magic Cards, which um, I went uh, too far with detail. A lot of it got uh, lost because uh, those were printed on foils. So uh, a lot of uh, the stuff that I was so happy to do, so like a fine uh, uh, and fun uh, detail to make, just ended up being like a single s pixel splotch. Uh, on the foil, which didn't look too good. So sometimes uh, doing too much I is also a thing. And uh, again, uh, going further uh, with uh, taking away the detail, uh, stuff for uh, Riot Games, kind of feels detailed, but it really is not. Uh, those are just, just big um, planes of nothing uh, that uh, 
just have um, uh, this particular rhythm of uh, super detailed uh, small uh, parts, but most of those paintings are r really clean uh, when you actually uh, start zooming in. And uh, another uh, kind of level of taking away the detail is, of course, um, uh, doing line art and uh, cell shading. Uh, so this is the stuff that I uh, often recommend to clients when they need like a fast asset that will uh, just leave on, uh, I don't know, uh, Instagram uh, story for 24 hours. And there's really no point of uh, spending, I don't know, three days on illustration when uh, it's supposed to be just like a fast, uh, uh, cute decal. Okay, so uh, our most valuable research uh, uh, resource, I would say, is time. So at some point, it's very important to be able to accurately uh, predict how much time uh, you will spend on a task. Um, uh, it's respectful to the uh, respectful thing uh, uh, to the client to be able to uh, accurately predict uh, how long you will take, but it's also important for you to um, correctly budget uh, for for your tasks and just not, not spend uh, I know what 100 hour uh, on an illustration that will pay you like uh, 300 dollars. What's the point? So for me, um, usually the breakdown looks like this at this moment. So uh, I can uh, make a, a character drawing uh, in a day. Uh, if I need to do a uh, kind of simple uh, uh, illustration with uh, one character and simple background, it's probably two days. If I need to add more characters, uh, it's probably around three to four days. And um, kind of goes up. So uh, for like a marketing art, uh, that uh, again um, it was more challenging because uh, it had to be um, had to crop for Facebook, had to crop for vertical on Instagram, had to crop for uh, YouTube. So uh, it was uh, uh, kind of took longer to compose. Uh, it's probably around uh, uh, 32 hours of pure work, uh, uh, but. Um, uh, it can go even higher. So uh, for Riot, I usually budgeted way more time, uh, and not because it's more detailed or it's particularly harder, but um, uh, the nature of that studio is that there are a, l a ton of stakeholders in every uh, with every uh, uh, piece of work. So instead of like working with uh, one art director, I had to kind of bounce around ten people uh, that uh, all had the right to give me feedback or uh, say like veto. We are not doing that. So uh, that takes time. That that is also work communicating with people and uh, repainting stuff over and over. So yeah, uh, uh, if the studio has the time and the money, sure, we're we're spending that much time if you want. Um, another thing is budget constraints. So that's more about communication. So. Um, uh, th those are uh, uh, will be examples uh, for book covers. So those are two for uh, Icewind Dale trilogy. So the client was uh, Wizards of the Coast. Uh, the the amount of money offered was fair. So sure, we are spending uh, let's say a few days on this. Uh, we can uh, add uh, a lot of detail, uh, like a proper uh, big illustration. But uh, for example, those were um, illustrations for a book for independent publisher. That was uh, also upfront that, uh, like, let's say I can pay you X, so uh, I uh, let them know that, okay, for that amount, I will give you like one sketch, uh, you uh, get one revision, and we are uh, taking away the detail because I can spend uh, only, let's say, uh, a day on the illustration like that for this amount of money. And they were cool with that. And even further, so uh, those are covers for um, books about cats <laughs> by a Polish uh, uh, publisher. Uh, so again, so uh, again, a smaller uh, budget. Uh, so uh, it's all uh, again about communication. So uh, cool for uh, that amount, uh, I can give you uh, one to two cuts, simple background, and uh, the back cover will be blurred. You good? You good? Awesome. <laughs> we can work. <laughs> um, so it uh, uh, all goes down to the sketches. So usually. Um, um, uh, um, depending on uh, what kind of studio and what arc, arc, uh, my relationship with the art director is, I prepare different kind of uh, sketches. So uh, uh, inside the project, when I was working uh, in the studio with the art director that I knew for years, I could just deliver very simple silhouetted uh, stuff and kind of 
uh, point to stuff and promise that I know what I'm doing. And our, our director was uh, cool with that uh, because, uh, yeah, we work a lot with each other. Uh, she trusted me. Sometimes when uh, outside people had to uh, take a look at the sketches, I would do something more um, detailed uh, with, for example, light, more line art, so kind of more information baked in. Uh, but and then again, for Riot, when there uh, are more people looking at it and uh, uh, the feedback is um, more intense, let's say, uh, it's better to um, leave, uh, leave less stuff for the imagination and um, yeah, be, be more precise with the sketch. Usually I deliver uh, around three sketches for uh, every illustration I make. I try to make them as um, diverse to uh, provide real options to the art director. Uh, so different angles, different uh, light situations, uh, the different stories told. Uh, uh, on the other side, uh, 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 I sometimes uh, make a sketch. I really like my sketch and I really want to make it. So uh, I try to push for like, mm, pick that one, pick that one. <laughs> uh, it sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. So uh, here I was doing a werewolf. Uh, our director picked a different sketch. Cool. Doesn't mean that it is the end. Some time had passed. A new brief came. A work cut. <laughs> Try number two. OK, cool, cool. No luck. <laughs> Again, they picked a different sketch. Third time a charm. <laughs> and success. <laughs> Uh, I wore down the art director, uh, they uh, knew that I would be trying with the sketch <laughs> and trying, so they let me do it. <laughs> and uh, I'm joking, but I, uh, this is uh, uh, also part of the time management at some point. Uh, because um, I have kind of ten, uh, 10 years of experience, I worked for some different studios, so many different projects. I literally have a library of like hundreds of sketches. So no ma <laughs> and because the topics uh, in uh, games, especially fantasy, are so repeatable, <laughs> at this point, I kind of whatever the um, question in the form of brief is, I have a ready answer. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, it's also uh, a time management uh, way. Uh, just uh <laughs> if it works, it works. <laughs> Somebody will buy it, and I I do that a lot. Uh, sometimes I, I just really like the post and some. Somebody take it. <laughs> um, but uh, this is also uh, to counteract situations like this one. So here uh, uh, I was tasked with, uh, uh, with making um, uh, key art for uh, uh, Riot Games for uh, Chinese New Year. Uh, so um, the way uh, it works often uh, in Riot is that uh, a lot of things are happening at the same time. So uh, the key art is... Uh, being created while the uh, concepts are being finalized, while the cinematic is uh, being planned out. So uh, it's like a chaos. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, with the first brief, I, I delivered four sketches. Um, some uh, things kind of uh, got uh, ruffled, uh, um, uh, reshuffled uh, along the way. So none of those got accepted. Um, we got uh, an environment that we, uh, for uh, to fit the cinematic, we really had to keep this in the uh, mm, uh, key art, which was kind of a problem because it didn't crop well. The yellow lines are the crop for uh, phones and iPads, so th there is a lot of dead space. We have five characters that we need to somehow uh, fit in, fit in uh, the, the image, tell the story. The perspective is kind of not helping. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so uh, instead of four sketches, okay, cool, now we have eight, and it keeps going. So the, the, the previous four uh, were a no, so another batch. And we are keeping some elements that we like from the previous sketches uh, while trying to, um, like, f find a winning um, uh, uh, composition. It ended up being this. I, I don't love this image, but uh, it was a long and painful road. And sometimes, uh, yeah, s s sometimes um, there are just so many moving elements that uh, you end up with something that you don't love, but for reasons uh, that are outside of your power, it works. Um, 
and sometimes uh, even some uh, because there are uh, multiple uh, leads or art directors working uh, with you. So um, I made a bunch of sketches for uh, for this crystal rose piece, and the uh, directors were um, not in agreement what they like, and they wanted me to kind of mush together two sketches that they like. So it's like, okay, <laughs> that, that is also an answer. And it ended up being this piece. Uh, there is a difference uh, whether you're working with uh, uh, art director that is uh, uh, in the room with you in house or uh, if you're outsourced or remote worker. So again, for for staff for uh, CDPR, when I was working physically in the studio, uh, I could uh, deliver simple sketches and kind of uh, point to the staff and uh, uh, tell uh, face to face the art director what, what what is my intention. So the staff could be simpler. But stuff, for example, for Magic the Gathering, um, it's always remote. And uh, th uh, you're not working constantly with art one art director because depending on the expansion, the art directors change. So you cannot assume that they will see the same stuff that you see within your sketch. So it has to be more uh, clearer, uh, more information, more uh, like uh, some information about the environment, about the light. It's also very useful. When I don't know what to do, I, I also uh, just pick a letter and say that that is my composition. <laughs> Absolutely can work. <laughs> uh, you can spell with my Gwent cards. Um, another very simple trick for making stuff feel uh, a bit more dynamic is picking a very simple uh, direction and just uh, making as much as uh, lines in the uh, composition to follow the direction and ultimately uh, makes it feel more dynamic. Very simple 3D can be also helpful. Like uh, this is made in SketchUp. So it's like Microsoft Paint for 3D. You can, you're able to pick it up in like 15 minutes because there's literally no learning uh, curve and you don't have to uh, 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 draw uh, all the uh, perspective by hand, which is awesome. Uh, it helped me a lot with this cursed piece. Uh, so uh, yeah, while we had uh, downtime waiting for some concepts to uh, come in, I just, took a half of day, modeled the uh, environment, and uh, because I had to do like 12 sketches, it was super helpful. Um, sometimes when the uh, game is older and there are uh, pre-existing uh, assets, you can just pull the assets straight out of the game for either reference or overpaint. The possible dolls, also a great way to uh, fast, uh, f like be fast about iterating the poses. Um, uh, you can do it in 3D, but for me, uh, it's just easier to like grab a doll, uh, pose it within seconds, take a photo, and um, yeah, and the composition is done basically. Just just, just overpaint. Uh, asking your coworkers, <laughs> very helpful. Uh, or uh, in the times that when we work remotely, I guess friends and neighbors. Asking your coworkers' dog, <laughs> even. It's uh, absolutely, uh, there are so many ways to uh, um, go around the process. Within the same uh, IP, uh, some reuse also happens. Um, even uh, like coloring pieces, uh, uh, the, the process can be uh, can sped up. So I, I like to uh, go pretty far uh, with my pieces in uh, black and white to uh, keep the control over the values. And coloring uh, black and white uh, illustrations like Super simple. So one thing I, I do is I uh, pick a solid color that is well saturated, uh, put it on a different blending mode, uh, put the opacity to like 50%, um, and it pushes like uh, your uh, light and dark values to complementary colors. Go to replace color, kind of saturate uh, some tones more, and um, what, it's like 10 minutes, and uh, you have a base that you can uh, manually coloring the, the rest and um, yeah it, it's just colored with, within like hours not days. <laughs> uh, another uh, way uh, are of course gradient maps especially when our directors want to see uh, kind of mm, different color options. Um, another very uh, important uh, element that I know that uh, a lot of artists are um, uh, not happy about, but I would really recommend being uh, at least somewhat um, active on social media. Uh, so uh, for the, the film gigs that I got, I actually didn't get them because I uh, had a uh, like, super polished portfolio on ArtStation. 
I got them because in free time, I like to draw cats and post them on Instagram. And like, I, I'm not joking, they, they found me through uh, like the cat drawings. And uh, because uh, those grabbed their attention, they went through my portfolio. Uh, they saw that I also do realistic stuff. And for obvious reasons, that kind of blended well in their minds for the Lion King project. <laughs> we'll see how that, that comes out. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, basically, um, if you're not visible to people in some way, like how are they supposed to find you? Uh, there are a lot of roles that are never um, open for applying. So. Uh, um, kind of, um, there are, are either headhunters or recruiters that go, uh, are basically crawling the internet for uh, candidates. And if you're just not online, yeah, th those roles are just will never come to you. And kind of depending, what do you want to do? Uh, because, uh, okay, so it, it's, it's impossible to be active on all of the uh, websites. Uh, plus, even being uh, uh, active on like two or three, it's like a time stealer and absolute pain in the ass. I get it. I feel it. But um, depending what actually you want to work on, uh, I would uh, uh, recommend uh, picking uh, like one or two strategically. So if you want to uh, be a studio artist, industry, like professional, uh, the way to go is to be uh, active on sites like uh, LinkedIn uh, or uh, um, Artstation. Um, or used to be our station, but yeah. uh, but uh, LinkedIn is hugely overlooked. Actually, uh, th they uh, they have a blogging feature, and um, people are r really using it and communicating. So uh, I would not overlook the LinkedIn. It's not only for old people. Um, so uh, this is the only way you can actually reach people that um, have access to like big budget project, cool IPs, um, and. Um, yeah, so, so the, the, those are the places, I, if that's what uh, you envision your career to be, I, I would try to uh, kind of polish the side uh, of uh, the media. Somewhere in the middle uh, are websites like Tumblr, uh, Twitter or Facebook, so uh, they gather some of that audience, but uh, they are really a mix. And on the other side of the spectrum, you have stuff like uh, uh, Instagram or uh, TikTok, but um, like big studio producers are not s spending their time on TikTok, uh, let's be honest. But if you want to um, go a different route, so a be independent artist, uh, uh, prop up your Patreon or a Kickstarter project, um, this is the perfect uh, audience that can, you, uh, can get you there. So uh, it really depends w what you want. So uh, I personally uh, use mostly uh, Instagram, uh, 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 Twitter or X. Uh, and uh, our station, but uh, I'm at least active on our station since it's just like a portfolio website. No, no, don't really a lot of community features. Um, another important aspect is to uh, really keep in mind that uh, even though uh, it is recommended to be somewhat active uh, uh, on social media, we are artists, we are not influencers. So, uh, um, uh, Personally, I prefer to keep um, my presence online uh, pretty professional, so uh, I can joke around, I, uh, I can uh, post some memes, but I personally don't want to invite uh, this uh, internet ugliness to my life, so I don't post about political stuff, I don't post about religion, se sexuality, all of this stuff is just, um, kinda, uh, you're inviting monsters into your life. <laughs> and um, I don't know, like some people can take it, uh, I don't want it. Um, but uh, uh, kind of, uh, in a way, polluting your uh, online presence with uh, a lot of your personal beliefs uh, also makes you uh, harder to find because uh, then uh, people have to, uh, not even uh, um, including that uh, it can put them off or, or not, uh, they uh, anyway have to kind of see through um, your text post to get to your actual art. Uh, being active is important. You don't have to, uh, and I would say you, you shouldn't uh, spend hours upon hours uh, online, but uh, posting like once a week, once uh, two weeks, even if you have to uh, recycle your old stuff, it's extremely helpful. Uh, it's uh, 
all place to being easy to find. So uh, if people Google you, uh, if you post uh, like pretty regularly, uh, you appear uh, higher uh, in the search results. Um, also paying attention to the changing trends. So uh, because I, I've been um, uh, active um, in art and in our communities for about 10 years, things really change. You, you cannot rely on one platform constantly. So the, this thing, uh, uh, back in the day, <laughs> DeviantArt it used to be like the main um, art platform. Uh, they, they, they used to advertise themselves as the biggest uh, art community. They were in the top uh, 100 websites, um, at least in the US. But uh, of course, they fell off uh, uh, over the time. And uh, right now, there is not much point of being uh, active there since there's no en engagement. People moved on to other platforms. So uh, sticking just to one place, uh, even like this year, we, we saw what happened with Twitter. Just, yeah, you have to migrate. Uh, uh, another thing, uh, like even Instagram. Uh, so uh, I took a screenshot of how much um, engagement my uh, image posts get uh, compared to Reels. Yeah, th there's like uh, no comparison. And the Reels that I post are like basic. So it's it's uh, just image and usually some music and it flicks, uh, flickers between like finished piece and uh, sketch. It doesn't take much effort and uh, gets um, gets the ball rolling, right? And um, again, um, the important part is uh, keeping it at the simmer. We are not influencers. Uh, there is only limited um, interested from general audience for the stuff that we do. Uh, there is definitely a cap that how how big uh, as an artist uh, you can uh, get on social media. Uh, no artist just blew uh, uh, over the night to have like a millions of uh, 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 watchers or subscribers. Uh, so uh, you kind of have to slowly, step by step, uh, over the years, uh, uh, build the audience that might uh, uh, stick with you. Uh, it's basically a, a very long game for uh, for uh, the type of work that we do. Um, so, okay, now in summary, uh, art can absolutely be a sustainable art career. Uh, you can do it for a long time, and uh, if you're careful, uh, you can avoid burnout. Uh, it can be like a very stable uh, uh, source of income. The money, uh, sometimes it's better, sometimes it's good, but uh, I would say, um, if you play it smart, it absolutely can be a uh, very fair pay. Uh, from working in so many studios, I uh, have to say that the dream studios don't really exist. Uh, uh, when they hit a certain amount of uh, workers, the same problems in all studios arise. And it is just like a function of um, a corporate culture. Tr a lot of studios are saying that they're trying to do something with uh, like the toxicity within the studios, but I, I really doubt that it can be helped. I it's just the human nature. When this many people gather and try to work together, there's just, just some shit that will happen. And um, if you're okay with it, um, I, I mean, basically you have to be okay with uh, some of amount of dysfunctionality within the game industry, because there are no studios that uh, avoid it 100%. Of course, some are, are outstanding Standingly bad uh, about uh, fixing the problems, but uh, they all have problems. Uh, it's an ever-changing industry, so the stuff that we were doing uh, 10 years ago uh, now is very much outdated. And um, like even the, the portfolio I uh, got into, like the first job, um, would not go get me into that position nowadays. So the standards for uh, juniors, basically uh, what used to used to be like a mid-level uh, art um, level. Right now, it's expected out of juniors. I don't feel it's fair, but it's just how, how things are. Um, respecting your own time, uh, because uh, studios and clients for sure won't. So you have to really guard it. Uh, it's your very uh, most precious resource. And being honest about uh, how long time, uh, how much time uh, stuff takes you, uh, towards yourself and towards the clients uh, is a big step. Um, social media is, um, in a way, um, your safety insurance. Um, 
things can go badly even this year uh, as we all know is not great <laughs> for the gaming industry like one thing uh, is AI but also uh, there was a, a lot of um, overemployment during uh, the pandemic so now uh, studios are uh, shedding those employees uh, so you kind of have to stay on your toes and really react to to the changes um, a lot of stuff that was uh, kind of fashionable types of games uh, even five five years ago right now are dead so you have to kind of change with the times uh, and all of those things kind of um, point to one thing like um, working in the gaming industry should be treated as a very long game that uh, you kind of have to plan out uh, across the years uh, it's uh, really not the type of industry that you can uh, easily jump in, do some work, jump out, disappear for five years, uh, come back, uh, work for six months, and then uh, uh, disappear again for the next decade. Um, I, I would say uh, it's really um, a type of job that has to be consciously planned out. Uh, uh, even if you plan to stay for a long time with uh, a studio, the studios themselves um, change dramatically. Uh, usually the studio that you're entering uh, one year will be very much uh, different um, set of people and um, a set of games that they are creating, let's say like three years when you're exiting. Um, the average amount of um, um, time uh, people are staying uh, in studios is uh, 2.5 years. So uh, when even if you're uh, starting uh, um, starting wor to work um, at a game, let's say it's a triple A title, uh, it takes five years to develop. If you're one of the people that uh, was from the beginning till the end, uh, usually the people, um, uh, the, the set of people working on this game uh, entirely changed twice within the, the span of creation of this game. So uh, it's very dynamic, uh, it's very hard to kind of um, find your just stable footing for multi year so it's I would say it's can be a sustainable uh, type of career but it's not very uh, stable <laughs> so yeah those are basically my thoughts and thank you so much <laughs> I feel like we need another talk from Spirit on a, a more inspirational because it, it took a bit dark <laughs> turn at the end. Just <laughs> I thought it was brilliant and really realistic. That is absolutely true, <laughs> absolutely true. And the, yeah, I mean the amount of useful stuff is just yeah. I hope you took notes because that was a lot. Uh, Uh, I don't know what else to say. It was really cool. Yeah, but now questions from the audience. Thank you. Yeah, where's the blue box? Okay. Hello. Hello, uh, I'm Andreas, second year student at XAMC. Uh, you were talking about the uh, presence on social media, mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to ask you, for mass audience, how does that, that, present, uh, that, that, that presence on uh, those social medias affect your uh, higher ability? And is it only in, uh, like in this specific field of the gaming industry, or is it also in other fields? Um, again, uh, it's... Um it's not a must. There are plenty of industry artists that uh, we will never learn about, that are just, just working uh, anonymously hidden within the studios. But it is an insurance policy. So, um, um, because the work uh, is so uh, unstable, um, it affects you in the way that if something goes really badly, you can have you have something to uh, fall onto. So um, uh, if you lose your job or uh, have to um, supplement your income with uh, like commissions, s print sales, basically it diversifies your uh, incomes. You uh, can uh, create some passive incomes. Um, maybe I am more paranoid than most, so I, I try to do like ten things at the same time. Uh, 
but uh, it also, um, I don't know, um, it, it affects you because also it, uh, uh, it's up your time and it is in many ways time wasted uh, of, of just going on YouTube and Googling like, oh my God, what are the newest uh, Instagram trends? So um, it adds more work <laughs> to your <laughs> workload for sure. But I would say, um, depending on your personality, if you're like super uh, go with the flow person, you don't have to do it. But I if you're like maybe more uptight, <laughs> I would recommend it uh, j just f uh, to sleep better at night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you for the talk. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, let's let's stop. Uh, quick question. Firstly, uh, what was the three D program that you recommended? Oh. Uh, it was uh, Google SketchUp. It's uh, there is a free version even in the browser. There is like a pro version that don't buy. It. <laughs> Not worth it. <laughs> yes. Uh, but but uh, uh, if you're even if you're even struggling to uh, in getting into three D, I recommend it because. Um, it has like 12 buttons. Yeah, like um, <laughs> just just a simple program because I usually use yeah. like a very bad mobile app to do the poses. But um, the real question that mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, uh, what was your favorite uh, character to draw out of the League of Legends uh, arts that you did? I actually really liked working on the Yordles. So the, the tiny um, yeah. gummy bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, they are not like most... Um, Maybe let's say beloved characters, but they are so pleasant to work. They're just like two circles in the face. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I like love them too. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, thanks for the talk, that was great. Um, so my question is actually kind of a two-part one. Um, part one is how much time do you spend on personal art versus professional art? And the second part of that is how do you find the energy balance to do both? Hmm. Um, I don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, so uh, I really had very little time over the years, um, especially last five years, to do personal <coughs> art. And the personal art that I do, uh, once, uh, for once, uh, I kind of do it, r it's pretty rare. And when I do, it's like the super sketchy, simple stuff. So cuts, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, uh, no, but, but um, mm, uh, especially for the, la uh, if you, were really ingrained in the game business. A lot of the problems that we are having now were visible um, on the horizon. So like the AI uh, for like two years, we, we knew um, uh, if you kind of spoke with the right people that we knew that it was coming. We knew that the, um, you didn't have to speak with people like during the pandemic, seeing how studios were hiring, you knew that cool. You hired 200 people uh, in six months, you'll fire uh, 100 of them. Smart. Uh, so um, kind of if you're, Oh my god, I got lost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, personal art, okay. Uh, so, uh, because uh, so many problems were um, visibly coming along, so for the last few years, I was really focusing on uh, like the um, paid work uh, to kind of uh, stash some money <laughs> for the lean times. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I really don't uh, find much time to do personal stuff. I, uh, when uh, uh, stuff settles within the industry, uh, I, I'll make more time to do that. But uh, probably, realistically, for like a year or two, I, I plan to just just work like crazy to offset any problems that might arise because I'm paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Um, first of all, I would like to comment that this was an incredible talk and uh, it checked all of the boxes of being very entertaining, very, very informative, very, very realistic and perfect both from like people who are not necessarily interested in visual to the art mm -hmm. and also being very professional for people that are interested in to the art. So that was great. Um, and I wanted to ask, um, Kind of like because uh, okay, it's kind of like uh, two-sided uh, because you mentioned uh, about the that there's no dream studio in your opinion. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if uh, you could give like a very very kind of uh, super short summary mm -hmm. of how your uh, career in art began and maybe if you had worked in um, much smaller mm -hmm. studios or companies or anything 
and if you kind of like saw kind of a bigger glimmer of hope <laughs> there? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. So, uh, because I uh, was starting um, 10 years ago in Poland where the uh, gaming industry was really only just starting. So, uh, when I got my first job, it actually was uh, uh, at CDPR. Um, but it was very different uh, because uh, it was before the release of Witcher 3, so they were uh, much less desirable place to work. And I literally just lived next to the studio. I, I was convenient to <laughs> hire. Uh, so you cannot get hired like this to uh, CDPR anymore, but it is a point of, uh, part of changing times. Sometimes uh, it's good to take a chance on a smaller studio that might blow up. Like uh, even this year, the, the studio uh, developing uh, Baldur's Gate. Like uh, uh, now, it's like everybody wants to work there. Two years ago, hardly anybody would be willing to move. Um, so uh, sometimes it's it just feeling the right moment. Um, uh, uh, I kind of got a start kind of chaotically because uh, I was studying architecture. Uh, I uh, so it was like a uh, engineering degree. <laughs> I, I got my uh, kind of uh, some first uh, internships as an architect. I hated it. I knew that I, I had to uh, kind of figure something out. So in the meantime, I was paying for uh, my university while doing commissions on DeviantArt. <laughs> so I, so I made the portfolio kind of by accident, j just um, just drawing the random bullshit that people wanted. <laughs> and because it was smaller studio, it was good enough. And by the time uh, I also uh, um, got like a random small uh, geek to uh, do like a motion comic for um, DeviantArt and a, a company that doesn't even exist anymore, it was called Mediafire, were developing an app for making a m like motion comics. And I was making like a, s a small comic for that. And uh, part, part of the stuff that pushed me through the interview at the project was um, the manager there was uh, an American, and he was like really sick of Polish um, uh, working culture of like everybody being like just all over the place, not documenting anything. So uh, when he heard that uh, I was going to, um, I, um, I was doing something for his people <laughs> and uh, repeatedly doing stuff for like an American company. He kind of took a breath of relief that, oh my God, <laughs> they, 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 you can work with them, so maybe you can work with me and not annoy me. So sometimes it's like very kind of, um, it's luck and like very random small stuff that you would think will, will, were not going to be helpful turn out to be very helpful. Uh, because I, I would not guess that nationality of the co people I was working with will be the thing that was helpful, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I see. And one tiny more thing. I know it may be kind of embarrassing, but is it possible to still find like your older stuff on DeviantArt if we were curious to check? Probably, yes. I did not delete anything. All the furry shit, weird shit, it's all there. <laughs> <laughs> Great. No, but because uh, uh, I know that uh, sometimes it's like cringy and embarrassing, but it's also uh, those are my memories. Those are other people's memories, and it's important to be real about like where we're starting. And it's usually not the great place. Yes. I'm su surprised with the amount of, with variety of themes uh, which you worked on. Uh, which one is your favorite? I have soft spot for fantasy. Just just give me knights and castles, I think. Good. <laughs> uh, th that's my favorite, but uh, you know what? Uh, uh, you say that there's like a lot of, um, mm, uh, there are a lot of themes and uh, s s stuff uh, covers a lot, but in reality, um, the themes are very repeatable, and at some point, you, you uh, it feels that they are more uh, kind of uh, diverse than they are. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> First of all, thank you, Anna, a lot for the presentation and uh, being there. Uh, my question is, is there some people in the industry or uh, elsewhere you look up to, like uh, get inspired and so on? 
Oh, for sure. I um, waste because it's not a waste. It's uh, let's say it's research. <laughs> at, uh, mm -hmm. um, I spend so much time on uh, 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 station and uh, even Instagram, uh, uh, just looking at people. I, I follow hundreds of artists. Um, um, even like coming to uh, events like this uh, is super helpful to uh, put like some context and uh, you sometimes face uh, uh, behind a uh, person that uh, um, you were like looking up to. I, I mean, uh, I personally uh, wish I was able to do um, uh, like more free flowing stuff like uh, 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 let's say like even Loish is doing. Uh, I absolutely am not capable of that stuff. This is like a, a totally different mindset. Uh, so. I cannot uh, really, uh, m most of my idols are not doing the stuff that I'm doing. I, I, I'm mostly charmed by stuff that I am absolutely not capable of doing. Thank you. And Thank you. I'm also a fan of Lois. Yes, yeah, so. awesome. <laughs> Hi, thank hey. you for the talk. Um, I had a question. What does your work day, work week look like? That's a good question. Uh, I try not to be a workaholic. <laughs> try is the key word. So uh, I, um, um, for the last few years, I um, uh, try to um, um, can I, um, find a balance between studio work and freelance work. Because I, I like to do both. Uh, they offer different stuff. So right now I'm working at Jagex. Uh, so uh, let's say uh, eight hours of the day are um, um, booked for stuff for them, for, for the calls, for their work. Um, um, after I'm done with uh, stuff uh, for the studio, uh, I uh, usually take some time to not neglect uh, um, uh, like my body, so I go to the gym, I go for a walk, uh, I cannot spend time with my dog. I uh, book uh, some evenings in the week for uh, for friends and family activities to also not go insane. But I, I really have to like book it and put in the ca calendar, uh, so uh, like to really not forget. <laughs> uh, and uh, can I, uh, after that um, buffer zone of uh, uh, doing human stuff, I go back and uh, usually in the evening I do some freelance work. So uh, I do some uh, stuff for Magic the Gathering or whatever the client of the week might be. But I also try not to overdo it so I don't do like um, uh, eight hours for Jagex and then eight hours for a client. I usually uh, just sit down for like an hour and two. And for me, it's enough to like push out a, an illustration a week doing just like bit by bit in the evenings. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, give it up to Anna. <laughs> 